My name's Isaac, better known as Izzy the Bricky. This week was one of the hardest weeks I've ever had to deal with because we had not only one, but two block work blowdowns where the wind took mine and Drew's entire work. However, with hard work, determination, and a guest bricklayer, we were able to pull the job back on track. You are watching episode three of Izzy the Bricky Weekly. Monday morning, and we're on the mansion build. Yesterday, Sunday, I went over to Nottingham and had a look at a new potential job that should be starting in the near future. The job itself looks amazing. It, for a bricklayer, it's your dream job. The materials are all there, the client's really knowledgeable. Um, lots of nice big runs. And I reckon we do some really nice quality work for these people. Anyway, we're gonna catch up tomorrow when we're on site. Right now, me and Drew are working on the back of the main building. We're putting across all of our soldiers right now. This has been left right to the death. However, I have got a table lift coming there, there and the back because we've got a massive dormer being built across all of this. So the joiner and the roofer need a lot of access on the back of this. So this morning, focusing on all of our soldiers. So right now, I'm going to get this last one on. I'll come back to you with a couple of tips and tricks I like to use. Yes, yes. Soldiers, so a couple of little things you guys should know, any apprentices should know, uh, we'll go over right now. So first things first, I like to use a line setup. You often see on site and you'll uh, also see other bricklayers use a profile from there to there to make sure that when you build your soldiers, they don't end up falling over. I've used that method down there and it worked really well. However, sometimes it's not always possible to do so. Whenever we're building soldiers, we're building over most of the time an opening okay so to work out how many soldiers we put into our opening we measure it this is actually 900 the opening okay soldiers work gauge just like brickwork so it's your 75 mil times table so as you go along building your soldiers you always just measure back to your window reveal or door reveal check in your gauge at the moment from this point here to my window reveal is 600 okay that is working gauge however we need to bear in mind that you need to add on an extra 10 mil to allow for a perk joint here something else you also need to bear in mind when you're building soldiers is whether or not you need tray and weep holes 90 percent of the time you do need tray and weep holes however in this case because i have less than 600 mil worth of masonry above my window door whatever I don't need it okay so you'll often see on new builds if you look up to the fascia and soffit and you look at all the soldiers or the details over the lintels on new builds they won't have any weep holes or any tray because it's not needed placing the soldiers down is really really simple what I like to do I always like to have a smear of compost on the front of my lintel okay nice full perp joint I put it down and then I push it and then trowel away, finger away, scrape, okay? What we don't want to do is hit it down and we don't really want to tap it too hard against the other brick. As you just saw there, just focus here. If I start tapping this, you see that other brick, it's moving, okay? So ideally, when you place it down, you want to place it 90% correct, let your hand and the trowel put the pressure on and do the work. Finally, if you are using a line set up in the more traditional way like myself, a couple of little things, you're always after a small Rizzler gap in between, just pop here, in between your line, both lines, okay? So, small gap there, small gap there. This means that the brickwork is running true and to over-exaggerate it, just to make sure that the brick isn't doing that or that. 
because it often happens you'll start building they'll start touching this line touching it and the line will go out and out and then eventually your soldiers will be leaning over and they're dead hard to get in so follow those tips you should be all right building soldiers practice does make perfect they are a skill in their own Right now, me and Drew are tackling the block work. As you can see over there, we've already set two pad stones to the correct height. Now, how I've worked out where the pad stones are going is using this string line. I've got a string line set, uh, the joiner set, a couple of nails in these two bits of timbers, um, which is center of this building. Okay, so all I've done, I've used this string line, connect both posts up and that is my ridge beam. What I'm doing right now, I've just plumbed down from this line, I've marked it there, and I've done the same on this wall, that wall, and the wall over there. That way I'm able to figure out exactly where my pad stones are gonna be built. I've also set the heights. I know that my steel is 200 mil, so I've just worked out from joist to underside of steel. So I've done all that math, uh, nothing too crazy going on. So we're going to finish building off these pad stones um, and then we're almost there. Tuesday morning, and we're on the mansion build. For those who don't know, this is the back extension I built last summer. It is absolutely massive. Today, me and Drew are gonna be working inside on the block and beam floor. We've got a lot of beam fill to do where the roof, I put his flat roof on. I just need to put all of my blocks in between all of his joists. Today, I've got the joiner coming to measure up the ridge beam steel. That should be coming, hopefully, if it gets ordered, Thursday. I've also got the scaffolders coming. They're going to put two table lifts on so we can send our brickwork up and finish those gables. So yeah, it should be a really productive day. The wind is picking up quite a lot today. So me and Drew have just ran upstairs, propped all of our gables so they shouldn't be going anywhere. So we're going to crack on. We'll speak to you guys in a bit. Right, me and Drew have just measured pretty much all of the cuts we need to do. Turns out it needs to be a cut that way and a split as well. So we have got a lot of cutting ahead of us. So we're gonna put some PPE on right now and blast this out. Wednesday morning, 1st of February. Yesterday, me and Drew experienced our first two blowdowns. For anyone who doesn't know, a blowdown is when the wind reaches a certain speed and it takes your work with it. Yesterday, me and Drew did our due diligence to make sure that all of our block work was propped. As you've seen in previous videos, we always like to prop our work. However, the wind got to about 35 kilometers per hour yesterday. So that is a lot of force, especially when you're eight meters, eight and a half meters up and you've got block work what's built up, ready to take a steel today. Um, you really are at the mercy of mother nature. It's really out of our control. So it is really unfortunate. Luckily, some positives, me and Drew weren't injured. We were off site, luckily, in the van having lunch. The job wasn't damaged on a whole, which is also really good news. All the blocks have been cleaned up and are gonna be reused today. So although it is a small setback, positive attitude and hard work can just push you along and there's no need to focus on something what's already happened and is massively out of your control. 
like I say, we really are, and that's many bricklayers know, at the mercy of Mother Nature. You can only do what you can do. And then it's in, you know, the winds or the weather's hands. So today we're going to pull up our sleeves like we always do, crack on, work hard with a positive attitude, and we're going to get it built back up. Oh, it's still windy though, isn't it? 20 past 10, and me and Drew, and special guest Craig Todd. Craig Todd Brickwork. Yes, Craig's turned up today to give me a massive push, so that's amazing. So, big shout out to him. Right now, we have set up all of our props, we've got them concrete uh, screwed into our block work, and then later on, we're gonna once again prop them from that gable to this gable, just like we've done over there. This gable's not gonna go anywhere. So, right now, we're gonna crack on, we're gonna blast this wall up to a safe height, do the same over there and then we're going to assess the situation and see how windy it is and we'll go from there. o'clock myself Craig Andrew have finished this gable almost to height we have gone overboard overkill with all the bracing I'll show you some clips from behind we've got battens going up everywhere we've got connecting boards all here this isn't moving at all so belt and braces we are not letting this go again we're now going to transfer onto the other one me and Craig we're going to blast that up and do the exact same thing we've done here and then the steel should be coming, hopefully later on today or tomorrow morning first thing. Sit the steel straight on and that is gonna lock it down from the top. So, I'm gonna crack on, come back to you in a bit. Right now, me and Drew are using some of this old timber from the existing house to prop and support our gable, just like we've done here. This is not going anywhere. We're using these rapiers concrete screws so all I'm going to do, I'm going to throw this up here. It's in line with my ridge beam. So that is where the gable is going to be most vulnerable to wind. We'll support it. We're going to anchor it to this. We're going to support this side as well. Once again, doing our due diligence to make sure that nothing falls. Uh, it's probably just doing your support, whether it's moral or physical. <laughs> right. Three, two, one. Oh my God, that is so heavy. Right. Hey, what? When that's bolted, this is never going to move again. No. Okay, just put your hand there. Yeah. Really good job. Thank you. That is so solid.
Yes, there we go. So we are stood where we stood this morning when I was gutted about losing our work. But as you can see, me, Craig, and help with Drew have sent all the block work back up and it's going to be ready for padstones. I've got one more course of block and the padstones to build tomorrow. The steel's coming as well tomorrow morning. We're going to sit that on. It's going to anchor everything down. As you guys can see, once again, we've done our best to lock everything down. 90% sure it won't go again. Fingers crossed anyway. Touch wood. And massive thanks to Craig coming down today. Absolutely just smashed it out. So Massive thank you to Craig, really appreciate it. Craig, give yourself a plug. What do you do? Bricklayer. Bricklayer, YouTube, Instagram, at Craig Todd Brickwork. Yes. yes. Yeah, so Craig Todd Brickwork, give him a follow, give him a, a follow on Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. Similar sort of content to me and just as good looking. Anyway, <laughs> we'll catch you guys tomorrow morning. <laughs> Seven o'clock and we've just got in. Just needed to say, what a great day we had. Obviously, we had such a terrible day yesterday with all the setbacks and unfortunately the weather. But having people such as Craig to come up, I think it was a three and a half hour drive he did this morning, turned up, we just blasted together, had some really decent chats, just talking about everything and anything. And just cracked on, did what we did. So fantastic day again, once again, just a massive thank you to Craig for coming up and helping me and Drew get this job back on track. Genuine, genuine bloke, much appreciation and love for him. So if you haven't already, make sure you go check out his Instagram and his YouTube channel. I'll put it on screen right now. Thursday morning, mansion build. As you can see from my smiling face, all of the gables last night stayed, uh, which is fantastic news. Really, really elated to see that this morning when I turned up. This morning, myself and Drew loaded out both table lifts. I then built both of these corners. Right now, we're gonna blast in this gable. We're gonna wrap back all of our brickwork up to this pad stone here. Then we're gonna hop over onto the other table lift and do all of that. So we'll come back to you in a little while when we're blasting in this brickwork. Drew's also gonna get his trial out again and show you all his mint skills. Right now, I'm just setting up a brick corner so we can carry on running in this gable end. Now, this week I've had about three separate apprentices message me on Instagram about setting up corners and how they're struggling to do so. So I'm gonna give you a couple little tips I like to use. Probably one of the first tips I like to use, I like to lay the brick about 90% right. I know that's hard to do when you're an apprentice, but you're gonna try and feel it down just like you lay into a line. Once you've done that, trowel away okay you want to use your hands when you're an apprentice it's hard to use a level a trowel and to control the brick with everything going on okay trowel goes down check for level perfect same principle applies my trowel's there okay i'm not going to use it to try and control my level and bash it and things like that i'm not even going to try and use my trowel to tap the brick okay level up against the wall you're checking for plumb Coming close through. We're checking for plumb. Okay, if I need to tweak this, 
brick here, just back up a little bit. So if I need to tweak this brick, if it's like that or tilting, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my hand, my spare hand, to push it to the level. I'm holding the level plumb, okay? I'm pushing my brickwork right to my level. Same goes for this, okay? Checking for plumb, it's correct, perfect. Same goes for this again. If this brick, I'm gonna move it, if that was like that, you see I've got a gap, okay? I'm not gonna pick up my trowel if I'm inexperienced and try and correct it like that. No need. Use your hand, okay? Once you get more experienced using a level and your trowel, then you can start using both of them together. But until you're experienced with using a level, you're best off just doing exactly what I said, foot against your wall, nice and plumb, hold your level right, use your hands as a tool, okay? Because everything in bricklaying is a tool. This is a tool, that's a tool, your trowel's a tool, okay? It's hard to get used to using different tools. So until you're more experienced, use your hands to your advantage. The steel for the ridge beam has just turned up, so we're somehow gonna get that off the wagon and onto site, and then we're gonna cont continue blasting up this brickwork. When you put your bed down and you're building a corner, you need to be quite quick with what you're doing. It's hard to manipulate, plumb and level a brick if your bed has already gone off. Okay, so bear that in mind. Obviously, we want the corner plumb right and true. But if I leave this for 30 seconds now, where I'll, I'm trying to look from a level, trying to sort everything out, it's going to be harder and harder as time goes on to get it right, okay? Something else to really bear in mind when you're an apprentice is ranging in, and I think it gets forgotten about quite a bit. Obviously, we are plumb, which is decent. When we range in, we want, just come quite close. You see my level? Every single brick is flat on my level. And if we check your corner here, what you just built, and if you can see, as I move my level down, it's all flat against the wall, okay? I used to be guilty of this when I was just learning bricklaying. My wall used to be plumb, okay? But the bricks maybe were like this, were well, over-exaggerated, were like that, and at a different angle again. So even though when you put your level up your wall, it was plumb, but over-exaggerated, it was like this, you know what I mean? So that's why it's really important to check your your range because that's also checking your face plane okay so we're after a nice plumb wall with every brick touching the entire thing okay we don't want bricks doing that or doing that always touching sad Friday morning, and we're on the mansion build. Yesterday, me and Drew almost got this brickwork too high, but we ended up running out of daylight about half, four, five o'clock. So today, we're gonna to be sending up this brickwork to finished height. Once the joiner has got his roof on, we're gonna come back and put all of our brick infill in once the ladders are built. Today, we're also gonna build across the front two lintels. The drawing shows that we have cladding, 
However, it also shows that we have a couple course of bricks going over some lintels. So we're gonna sort that out. And finally, we're gonna to top off once again, those two block work gables, two full height, because the steel is here and that is gonna be going on Saturday morning. So right now, me and Drew are gonna crack on. We'll come back to you in a bit. Right, yesterday, while looking at your footage, Drew, and this goes for a lot of apprentices, I noticed, and I noticed it yesterday while you was doing it, when you're putting the brick down, you were scraping, 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 scraping. You were doing about six scrapes per brick, okay? Ideally, when you put a brick down, one scrape, two scrape maximum okay because you're going to waste so much time scraping your bricks already down and i know it's correct because i saw okay but you're just wasting so much time and also you're kind of smearing the brick okay so when you scrape a decent angle you don't want your trowel let me clean up the trowel you don't want your trowel like flat against like that okay because i'm going to do an example you can see it's slowly smearing okay one two done forget about it one, two, that's laid, that's done, okay? No need for excess, uh, excessive scraping, okay? Although I just did three. <laughs> right now we've got some lunch or breakfast because the neighbors around here are amazing and they've dropped us off some samosas and onion bargies and things like that. So I'm gonna eat, yeah boy, mm -hmm. sad. I'm buzzing. Oh, we're so close now. I am absolutely buzzing. Awesome. There we go. So me and Drew are wrapping up for the week. We ended up building this brickwork gable, the other brickwork gable. We built the blockwork gables, not once, but twice with the massive help of Craig Todd Brickwork, who did a 350 mile round trip to come give me and Drew a hand. Anyway, on that note, we will catch you guys in episode four next week. Thank you very much for watching. See you in a bit.